Let me show you an optional way to draw countertops and backsplashes in version 9 and previous versions. On our floor plan, we have everything ready except for the countertop and backsplash. To the left-hand side of your screen, there's an icon which is named Countertops and Trims. It looks like a little magic wand with a piece of molding around it. If I left click on that and open up a brand new menu, you'll see that on the left hand side of the menu, I can indicate that I would like to design countertops and backsplashes by putting check marks in the boxes next to each. To the right hand side of that is another column for catalogs. One of the settings that I like to use in catalog is I change my catalog to the room top catalog. I do that for those of you that want to produce countertop drawings but ne don't necessarily want to see generic pricing appear there. I'll do the same for my backsplashes. This is actually a default setting. Once you change this, your 2020 will be set like this from now on. Another change that I like to make before designing my first countertop using this feature is under model. Model determines the type of countertop you're going to select. I always work with the very last option in the list which is called square foot top. And I do so because a square foot top will automatically draw without seams. You can add your seams afterwards anywhere you want because it'll draw a seamless countertop. Once we've made our selections, they will stay set as defaults from now on. So anytime you wanted to auto design a countertop, you can simply click on the countertop and trim tab and then just click on the add button and you instantly have countertops and backsplashes all throughout your room. Let me show you a couple of quick examples of how we can modify. I'm going to zoom in on the area down here at the bottom and I'm going to radius the corner on the uh, end of this countertop. In this version of countertops, we would right click, we would highlight the top and tell the system that we want to edit. When we choose edit, we will right click on the item that we want to edit. So if I right click on the point and choose radius corner, I can simply type in one and hit enter. And I have a radius corner. If I wanted to, let's say, change the island top, let's pan up to the island top. And I'm panning by holding the wheel down on my mouse to move my plan around. I'm going to right click on the island top. I'm going to choose edit shape. I'm going to right click on the line and say add line. As I move to the left, once again, I'm going to type in my dimension 12, enter. If I wanted to bevel the corners, I can right click on each corner, simply choose bevel, and once again in my edit box, type in the clip. I'm going to say three inch clip top. I'll drop down to the bottom and say, let's do a three inch clip uh, bottom. So we'll say three inch clip, enter. Once I'm done, I'll click the green check mark. We'll zoom back out by double clicking on the wheel on my mouse. And you'll see on your plan that you have added a countertop and even made quick shape changes. If you want to take a quick look at this in the countertop mode, at the bottom of the screen, you can click on the countertop tab and you'll see your countertop drawing with all of the appropriate dimensions. If I wanted to take a quick look at this in perspective, we'll go back to view. Let's do a, um, in this case, let's do a, maybe a top view. So I'll click on the icon second from the left. We'll do a top view. We'll look straight down on the top. And you'll see your island with all the shaping features that we've added. 